So alpha is the probability of making the type 1 error. So the beta is the probability of making the type 2 error. Again, the type 1 error is the uh, reject error you will make by rejecting H0 when H0 is true. And beta is the error you will make by accepting H0 when H0 is false. Okay, so, so the ideally, so in other words, the correct decision, if you, so you want to do the right thing. So in other words, the correct decision, the ideal decision, so you should not make any errors. Alpha should be equal to zero. The beta, that probability, that error should be equal to zero. So, but you are going to do it with a random uh, sample. So making a decision like that is impossible because of that random. Okay, so what happened is that this alpha and beta, they are inversely related. So when alpha error goes down, type 1 error goes down, the beta type 2 error goes up. The same way when beta goes down, the alpha goes up. They are inversely related. So, okay, so the only way if you want to minimize both errors, you need to increase the sample size. So the thing is that, so if you increase the sample size, then you can uh, uh, minimize both at the same time. So, but the other way around, sample size is kind of the money in technically. Okay, so like say for example, if you're dealing with a very highly uh, expensive component or something like that. So if, if you want to test it, you have to burn it, say for example. So then, that goes with the money or you have to spend so much uh, money to collect certain number of data okay either that or so is fully related to money or the other way the, the whole idea of statistics is that you need to keep the sample sizes in a decent way so that way you can get make the best decision okay so so you don't want to increase the sample size Basically, you need to keep it in a uh, manageable size, okay? So that, so that's the so we are so that's the problem with that, okay? So then the next best thing you can do is the fix one error. So either fix one either alpha or the beta, and try to minimize the other error. So so try to minimize the other, okay? So this can be done, but uh, uh, this is kind of difficult in most cases. Okay, try to fix one error and try to minimize the other. Uh, so, so we are not going to look at that way either in this class. What we are trying to do is that we are trying to take an easy way out. So forget one error. Forget one error. Usually people forget about the beta. Okay. Uh, you will see that why we do that later. We forget one error and make the decision just using the other error, which is alpha. Okay, so that's what we are going to do in this class. We are going to forget about the error beta. Uh, so again, the error beta, you remember that error beta is the error you, you might make by accepting H0 when H0 is correct, when H0 is false, okay, by accepting H0, see, beta is the accept H0 when H0 is false, Okay, so, so the thing is that since we are not going to look at beta, we are, not, we are going to kind of uh, say our conclusion in a different way. So we are, going, we are not going to, we are going to say it this way. So we are going to say, based on the sample evidence, reject H0 and accept HA at alpha level okay later i will discuss this thing okay at alpha level so that's one way we make the uh, the conclusion so in other words so reject this and accept that at alpha level okay or the other way we say that there is not enough evidence to reject h naught and accept h a at alpha level so there is not enough evidence to reject H0. So there's not enough evidence to reject H0 and accept H. We are not going to say that this is correct. That's the whole point. 
Yeah. So we are trying to avoid saying that this is correct. So either we say that this is wrong and this is correct, that is acceptable to say, but we, we don't say that this is correct. Instead of saying this is correct, we say that there's not enough evidence to reject this and accept that. Essentially, we are saying this may be correct, but we are not going to say it in a straightforward manner. So sometimes this setup is known as the inconclusive setup also. Okay, so we again, there's not enough evidence to reject H0 and accept, accept HA at alpha level. This alpha level has to be there, okay? Later, I will explain why it has to be there, okay? So, the important part here, uh, in the beginning, in the beginning, later I will tell you how to do it otherwise. Uh, we avoid saying H0 is true, since we are not looking at the value of beta, which is type 2 error. See, if, again, let me look at it. Value of beta, so this is, basically uh, accept H0 when H0 is false. So without knowing the size of the error you are going to make, you don't want to say that accept H0. Okay? That's the whole thing. Okay? So that's why, so we are not going to say that accept H0. Okay? So, alright. So then uh, these are the technical words I need. So we will... Uh, look at a couple of examples. So I am going to look at these three examples. So these three examples pretty much three different type of examples. So along the way I will explain how to get that alternative hypothesis. Again that uh, the, this, uh, this here this alternative hypothesis uh, this one H0 and HA is known as a research hypothesis. So this is the, you need to pick this hypothesis accordingly what you want to do. Okay. So that way, basically, see, you remember that we said that we are not going to say that this is correct, accept that. So all we are saying that is this is correct. Therefore, whatever you want to say, you need to put it here. So that way, in a, or in a straightforward manner, you can say that this is correct. Okay? Here we are not saying this is correct. All we are saying that we do not have enough evidence to reject H0 and accept it. So this may be correct, but we are not saying in a straightforward manner. Okay? Therefore, that's why we say that this is the research hypothesis. Okay? So we were, what you want to, what you are looking for, you need to put it right in there. So that way you can open this, I mean, in a straightforward manner, you can say that this is correct, okay? All right, so, uh, so with these examples, I will explain how to pick that uh, H0 and H, uh, H0 and H1 and so on, okay? So usually H0 goes with the current belief or something like that. So in other words, that's what you are hoping to reject and accept HA, okay? All right, so let us look at the very first example. So, in this first example, so it's an example I picked from a book. So, in this example, so in this example, uh, so, uh, so there, uh, this university, they are using uh, these uh, fluorescent bulbs each year. Uh, the bulb currently uses has a mean life of 900 hours. A manufacturer claims that its new brand of bulbs, which cost the same as the brand the university currently uses, has a mean life of 900 hours, basically, for the new, new bulb. Okay, so the manufacturer comes and uh, claims that the new bulb has the mean life more than 900 hours. The university has decided to purchase the new bulb, new brand, if when tested, the test evidence support the manufacturer's claim at the 0 0.05 significance level. That is that type 1 error, ALPA, 0 0.05 significance level. So, uh, ALPA, 0 0.05 level, okay, which is the type 1 error. So, suppose that 
64 bulbs were tested with the following results. So the university goes and picks 64 bulbs and burn them and the average for those 64 bulbs is 917 hours and the standard deviation is 80 hours. So the question is, will the university uh, buy this new fluorescent bulb? Okay, so so that you already know the app. So sample size is 64. So what you want to do is that the new you want to see whether the mean life. So according to that, when you te test it, if the new mean is more than 900, the university has decided to buy the uh, the new bulb. Okay. So what you what you are hoping is that kind of new bulb is better than the old bulb. For the old bulb, the mean is 900, okay? So the idea is that the mean for the new bulb has to be bigger than 900, correct? So in other words, the alternative hypothesis has to be the mean has to be more than 900. Is that correct? All right. So in other words, say x is the, uh, the lifetime of new bulb, okay? So the lifetime goes like that. So the mean is mu and the sigma square for the new bulb. We don't know. Either one we don't know. Okay. So what we are trying to see is that whether this mean is more than 900 based on whatever our random sample. This is our random sample 64 and x bar is that and that. So also now the thing is that uh, later I will give you exact conditions and everything, okay? So we already know that even if you start with something like that, if uh, as long as this is continuous or if you have a huge sample, using the central limit theorem, we know how to deal with this. Uh, we get this nice curve. Once we get this nice curve, lot of we can do a lot of stuff, okay? So that's the idea, okay? So either way, later we need to end up with this nice curve, okay? So right now in this case, we are using the central limit theorem to get into that. Uh, so once you get to that, so basically now, the, is that clear now this null hypothesis is mu equal 900. And the alternative hypothesis is mu more than 900. By the way, so in this class, uh, always uh, with all, all low level classes, we have to keep this one with this equal sign. Later, uh, uh, actually, even right here, we can, uh, I can show you why this is the case, okay? So, uh, uh, the, the reason we are going to look at the distribution of that under this hypothesis, under the null hypothesis. So, that's, we need to keep it equal sign here. Okay, so uh, that's the reason we want to keep it that way. But later, if you take upper level class, we can check instead of checking like that, we can check something like that. Whether mu is, ideally this is the better way to do that. Actually mu 900, more than that. It's really you are checking with this versus that in this case. But always in this class we keep an equal sign over there for the null hypothesis, okay? So, and uh, so let me stop here and get into the next video, okay?